Hey everyone, hope you had a great Thanksgiving. I know I did. I watched The Substance with my family. But we're not here to talk about old movies. We're here to talk about what's on the horizon, what we're gonna be watching. This is the December what I will watch video. That's right, I did skip November. None of you said anything. We're gonna power through. Let's start with Here, the new Robert Zemeckis movie. I still haven't seen it. I was planning on seeing it this month. Didn't really find the time. I, it's really overwhelming right now, the amount of things there are to watch. And Here, for some reason, just feels like the least important of them all. But I really should be prioritizing it. I've seen some, like, clips of it on Twitter. And by clips, I mean clip. I'm sure if you've been on Twitter at all in the last week, you know the clip I'm talking about. And it's honestly got me more interested to check this thing out. I know people are kind of, you know, jumping on it and, and roasting it. But to me, it looks just fascinating. It could be the worst thing in the world. It could be, at the very least, like, respectable. I'm super curious about this thing, and I cannot wait any longer. I need to watch it, like, right now. Janet Planet, another one that I was planning on watching in November but just didn't get around to. Uh, this is another one that's just been on my watch list for a hot minute. I missed its very short theater run. It does seem like my kind of indie. I like these slow kind of stylish films. I don't know anything about Annie Baker, but I know that this is her directorial debut and people have been really hyping it up. Annie Baker is a playwright. So Queer, the new one from Luca Guaranino, uh, one of my favorite working directors. He's literally only missed once with me from what I've seen. And Queer does seem to like be all over the place for people. Some people love it, some people absolutely hate it and say it's like a complete mess. I really don't know what to expect. Again, I have been very quick to defend Luca with whatever he's put out, except for Suspiria, which I thought was a very long, very drawn out mess. But I've never been a huge Suspiria person, so I don't know. I'm actually kind of going into this with high hopes. I think it's probably going to do it for me. I think the trailer looks beautiful. I love everybody attached to it. Miller's Crossing, you might be thinking, well, why? I realized after watching True Grit this last month that I am like nearing the end of the Cohen's filmography. Um, I might as well start thinking about doing a Cohen's ranked video one of these days. And Miller's Crossing is probably the next big one that I haven't seen. I've never seen Miller's Crossing. It seems like an essential Cohen Brothers film, so uh, what better time to get into it than December? Possession. Uh, another one that I was planning on watching all the way back in October and then I pushed it to November and I, I still have not seen it. I'm gonna say December is gonna be the one. I will try to make time for it at some point this month. It, it is a packed month but you know there's got to be some room for possession. People really freaked out when I put this in the first what I will watch um, because they were both shocked that I hadn't seen it and also like this seems so up your alley and I believe you so yeah, I really, I really should make some time for this. King Kong, something important to note about um, December is that this is the final month of Monkey Mondays. I know, I know. It's gone by pretty fast, if I'm going to be honest with you, and there's a handful of monkey movies I am not going to get to before the end of the year, so I have to start prioritizing, like, essentials, and I would consider Peter Jackson's King Kong an essential. It's, you know, one of the biggest King Kong movies ever made, if not the biggest. It may not be the most critically acclaimed, but it is. It, you know, a lot of people think it's worth watching. It is his first film after Lord of the Rings, is, uh, I think? Maybe not? And yeah, I've I've seen bits and pieces of this, you know, I, I saw some of it when I was a kid, but I've never seen the entire thing all the way through. I don't know, this just feels like the time to watch it. Everyone else is going to be watching another Adrian Brody movie that's extremely long, but I'm going to be watching this one. Speaking of Monkey Monday movies that I need to get to, Every Which Way But Loose, another big essential that I have been putting off all year. I've been waiting for like the right moment. It's it's honestly the one I've been the most excited to watch of everything. Just because it's like Clint Eastwood, an orangutan, how could this go wrong? It seems like extremely up my alley. A lot of my friends who've seen it have been like, it's the shit. Really looking forward to this one. Um, definitely can't miss it. Uh, there's no way I get through this year without watching this, so looking forward to it. Memoir of a Snail, getting back to some recent releases. Uh, this is one that I was going to see at Chicago International and unfortunately missed. Uh, I've seen it get a lot of love as one of the best animated films of the year, one of just the sweetest movies in general that's come out this year. It stars Sarah Snook. Uh, it's, you know, one of those like kind of depressing animated movies, which I always love. I think I should just watch it regardless because I'm, I'm like 90% sure it'll be nominated at the Oscars and I do plan to watch every nominated film again this year, so I may, I just, I should just get around to this sooner rather than later. But yeah, really looking forward to it. I, I think it's going to be up my alley based on everything I've heard. A Complete Unknown, obviously going to see this one. Uh, hopefully before Christmas. James Mangold, not really on my good side as of recent, to be honest. I obviously really didn't like Dial of Destiny. 
I wasn't as crazy about Ford v Ferrari as everyone else. Girl Interrupted was pretty good, but I've never, I've never really been a huge James Mangold fan. Um, I'm pretty sold on the trailer, to be honest. I think the trailer looks fun. I think Timmy looks fine. I think it'll be a very serviceable biopic. Um, I'm, I don't think it'll be offensively bad by any means. I'm looking forward to checking it out, to be honest. Speaking of Christmas releases, there's also Baby Girl, the new film starring Harris Dickinson and Nicole Kidman. Uh, again, don't know, like, actually anything about this other than the the cast that's attached uh i've heard like really crazy things like people saying it's like really really special so i'm really looking forward to that um have literally zero expectations uh other than i've heard good things but i i truly couldn't even tell you what the tone of this film is i haven't even watched the trailer i've, I've read nothing about it before i get to the other big christmas release i'm gonna plan on watching the original nosferatu which i've never seen I was also going to watch this one back in October, never got around to it, but to be honest, I don't see myself going to see the new one without having watched this. I, obviously, it's probably not essential, but you should probably see it. It's a classic, one of the first horror movies ever. Um, gotta check it out. And then obviously, the new Nosferatu, which I'm getting very excited about based on some early reviews. It's crazy how many people have already seen it. It's making me upset. But you guys know me, big Robert Eggers guy. Uh, he has also not really missed with me. Even The Northman I thought was really fantastic. So looking forward to this one. It seems like he's kind of returning to his roots a bit. He's not as, um, what's the word, neutered as he was with The Northman. So yeah, really looking forward to this, even if I'm not crazy about Lily Rose Depp. Mufasa, uh, it's so sad just seeing directed by Barry Jenkins. It's so every every new thing I see about this film makes me really upset because I just you know, I saw the clip and I saw the the shot on Twitter and it's just it looks horrible. It looks terrible. I mean, I hope Barry Jenkins can take what he made from this and, and make something really... Look at this cover photo, man. I hope he can take what he made from this and make something really amazing and really just unapologetically him, because nothing about this screams Barry Jenkins to me. It's it's such a such a sad thing to see. Craven the Hunter. Um, I'm going to do it. I'm going to watch it. I, I'm not really looking forward to it. The only thing I know about this guy to be honest. Is this even like an official movie? Like Fred Hetchinger? Okay, maybe this won't be that bad. I was really into the Spider-Man games, um, especially Spider-Man 2. I, I actually thought it was like a really amazing video game. So that's kind of all I know about Craven the Hunter. You know, obviously not really my thing, but I'm gonna see it and there's probably gonna be a video. I don't know. It's, it feels like something worth talking about. All We Imagine is Light, a film that I had the opportunity to see at the tail end of this month, but just couldn't make the time for. Heard it's one of the highlights from Cannes that I didn't get to catch, and uh, yeah, I've, I've heard mostly good things. I don't think anyone has been disappointed by this one, so hopefully gonna make some time for this before the end of the year. And I think that's gonna do, obviously there's gonna be some more stuff in there, but for, you know, from what I can tell, this is what we got. What are you guys planning on watching this month? Is there anything that should be on my radar that's not here? Hope you guys had a good month. Hope you guys had a good Thanksgiving. I hope you have another good month and a good holidays. And I think that's going to do. Okay.